Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. We're currently looking at reporting in Project 2019 and in the previous section we started to customise the Project Overview Report or rather a copy of the Project Overview Report. And I left you with something to check at the end of the preceding section and that was what the filter upcoming milestones actually does because that's the filter that drives the table on the lower left there, the milestones due table. Now you can't actually see directly from here what a filter does but if you go back into Gantt chart view and go to the view tab and go to filters and more filters and if you scroll all the way down to upcoming milestones and click on edit you can see that filter and the filter is made up of two conditions first of all milestones equals yes and secondly percent work complete isn't a hundred percent so we're looking for incomplete milestones. Now when it says upcoming, that doesn't mean within a certain period of time. That just means any incomplete milestones. So we see all non-completed milestones in this particular report. Now during the balance of this course, we're going to be looking at a number of different reports and it's sometimes useful just to be able to go back like this and check, for example, what a particular filter does or maybe how a particular custom grouping works. Let's now turn our attention to the other table, the late tasks table. And as soon as I click into that, you'll see that the field list appears. Note that if at any time you don't see the field list and perhaps you've accidentally or intentionally closed it down, you can show it again from the Table Tools design ribbon and just by clicking on Table Data in the Show Hide group. Now in the case of the table on the right, we have six fields instead of just two. So we have Name, Start, Finish, Duration, Percentage Complete and Resource Names. And if you look at the field list on the right hand side, you can indeed see that those are the ones that we have selected. So name, resource names, and if I scroll down, you'll see that those other ones are selected also. And as I select or deselect these from the field list, you'll see that it affects the way that they're displaying in this table. So if I untick resource names, you can see that that now disappears. And I'm actually going to put that back. Another thing you can do in this field list pane is you can reorder these columns. So for example, you'll see here at the bottom, I have names, start, finish, duration, percentage complete and resource names. So if I wanted duration to, for example, appear after name, I can just click it and drag it up. And you can see it reorders it in the table. Similarly, if I decided that I didn't want duration at all anymore, I could right click on it and I have the option to remove field. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it where it is, but that option is available in that right click menu. And just to keep things consistent, I'm actually going to drag duration back to its original position. Now, working on that principle, if I went back to the table that contains the percentage complete, and decided that what I really want to show in my project overview is not just percent complete, but also the percentage of work that's complete because percent complete refers to the amount of time that's complete. So if I go to my field list and scroll down, I have an option here to select percentage of work complete. And that gives me a second column in my table and just makes my project overview a little bit more informative. Now looking at these figures, the fact that I've used 56% of the time to do 43% of the work doesn't necessarily mean that I'm behind schedule because the work may not be evenly distributed over the time. But those two figures together can often deliver quite an important message. Now in this particular table, we are concentrated on looking at the data in the table. Of course, there are design elements to this table as well. We probably want to change its style to look like the other tables to some extent. But apart from the styling, which we're really going to concentrate on in the next section, if when you're working on a table, you go to the Layout tab in Table Tools, there are a number of things that you can do there. 
So I have the late tasks table selected and you'll see that I have a table size group which will allow me to adjust the height and the width of that table. So this can sometimes be a little bit more granular, a little bit more accurate than just dragging the table in and out. Now looking at my table, I can see that I could definitely probably do with a little bit more room for those resource names. So I might want to adjust some of these other columns. So probably percentage complete could go a little bit narrower. So if I click in the percentage complete column and go back up to my table tools layout ribbon, you'll see that we also have a cell size group just here where again, I can make those granular adjustments to the height and the width. I also have a distribute columns option, which will distribute the width of the selected columns equally between them. Now in this case, I'm just going to use the little roller arrows and I'm going to take the width of this column down to 0.7. And you can see that now that I've done that, I've got this percentage complete starting to wrap around in the cell. So what you might want to do at this point, and I mean, it doesn't look great in this example, but it is something that you can do is change the text direction for this column. So again, I make sure that I'm clicked in the correct cell. I go up to my layout ribbon and I have a text direction option. And I'm going to say rotate all text 270 degrees. And I could then, if I wanted to make that a little bit neater, adjust the height of that individual cell. So you can see as I click those rollers again, and there we go. Now it looks a bit odd in this example, but hopefully you get the idea of how that might be useful in some examples you might have. So now that I've done that, I've given myself a little bit more room. I could adjust the size of this resource names column. So again, if I click in it, I'm going to go to cell size and I'm going to make that width a bit bigger like that. So that looks a little bit better and is what I was trying to achieve. So we've looked at how to choose what data is shown in a table and how to change the layout of a table. And we're going to concentrate on design elements a little bit more in the next section. But for the balance of this section, I'm going to turn our attention to charts because much of what you've learned about tables will also apply to charts. But there are a couple of added features that I need to explain as well. So let's take a look at the percentage complete chart up here. And the first thing to note when I click on it is that by now you should be able to look in the field list on the right and assess how the contents of this chart are put together. And again, I'm just going to make that a little bit wider to make it easier to see. So the first thing to look at in the bottom of the field list pane is the filter. So this is showing active tasks. There's no grouping, but we're showing outline level one. So these are in effect the top level tasks. Often they're summary tasks, but not necessarily. Just whatever is at the level below project summary. Also note that there's no sorting applied here. So normally they would just be sorted by default by ID. And looking at the field list pane again, as you can see, we are showing just percentage complete. Now with this particular type of chart that we have here, it really is only appropriate to have a single field because with this column chart, the value in that field determines the height of the column. You can, of course, have different types of column chart, and we'll be looking at those later on, where there may be more than one column for each value on the horizontal axis. But we'll come to that a little bit later on. The other aspect of this chart, though, is what is happening on the horizontal axis. Now, the variable that's represented on the horizontal axis is normally referred to as the category variable in Project 2019 charting. And above the field list, you have something that you don't get when you're looking at selecting data for a table. And that is you get a drop down to select a category. Now, what categories are available will very much depend on the type of chart. But at the moment, if I click on that drop down, one of the options available to me is name. And that's task name. And of course, that's the one that's selected at the moment. If instead I selected ID, you would see the same information, but on the horizontal axis, you can see the IDs of those level one tasks that are shown in this chart. So let me just quickly go back to name. 
And regarding the chart itself, you can see now basically what data is shown. And we're going to talk about the type of chart in a little bit more detail in a moment. But within the chart, there are a number of selections that you can make. The chart itself is actually made up of a number of elements, and we'll talk about formatting and design in relation to those again a little bit later. But for example, what we have here is the vertical axis and the labeling on that vertical axis. And what we have here is a horizontal axis. Each of these is an individual bar and we can format the individual bars. But what I want to concentrate on first here are these three buttons to the right because these are some of the quickest and easiest tools that enable you to change certain elements of the chart as to whether they're shown or not. You can change some styling of the chart, although we're going to concentrate on that in the next section. And you can also apply filters to the chart. So let's start with the first button, this one whose screen tip says chart elements. With this, you can determine what's shown as part of the chart. Now, this is a great one for you to experiment with yourself. You don't need me to go through all of these. Just try it out for yourself. For instance, if I wanted to show a data table, I could select it and it shows me the data table underneath the chart. And if I wanted to remove that data table, it's a very simple case of just unticking it again. Maybe I'd like to show a legend. So again, I can click on legend. And I can choose where I want that legend to be displayed. So right, top, left, bottom. So I'm going to say top. And as I said, you can go through and you can experiment with these and try them out for yourself. Now, the next option, the one that looks like a little brush, is the chart styles button. And this gives me access to the style and color options. So when I click on that button, note that the screen tip is chart styles. And you see a list of styles and I could choose an alternative style if I wanted to such as uh, let's say this one let's go really different and then i also have access to change the color scheme if i wanted to as well so in keeping with our kind of golden yellow theme let's choose monochromatic palette 4 and that makes it tie in a little bit better and the third button i have is the filter button and that lets me filter either series. So basically the series are the vertical values. Now in this case, I'm only showing a single series and that is percentage complete. In a chart where I maybe was showing two, three, four or more vertical values. So some sort of clustered column chart, for example, I could select which of the vertical values I wanted to show at any time. And similarly with the categories. So this is the horizontal categories. I've got them all select. So let me deselect all. And let's suppose I only want to show requirements and testing and click apply. And there we go. Those filters have now been employed in my chart. I'm going to go back and do select all again and click apply. And my chart is back to the way it was. So we've covered most aspects of how to get the data you need into a report. We've looked at quite a few aspects of formatting and we've looked at design a little bit as well. So in the next section, we're going to fill in a few gaps in relation to design and formatting and look at some additional general points in relation to reporting. But that's it for this section. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get a free Microsoft Project 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, go ahead and click right over there. And click right over there to watch all the videos in this Project 2019 Beginners Playlist.